Everybody knows that the rich get richer, but it's much deeper than just having like an investment portfolio or owning like the means of production or whatever, right? Uh, it, it really goes way beyond that because there are a lot of ways they do it that you don't really think of in your every day-to-day -day life. So I'm gonna give you three of those examples that I find are actually pretty important. So the first one is, is the ability to take risks. So let me compare myself to one of my friends. We both went to the same college. We had the same exact job, but the way we approach things are a lot different because of the way we were brought up. So for example, for me, my parents are well off and I don't really have to worry that much about them. So a lot of other people, they come to America, they work and then they send money back to their home country, wherever that is. You hear the story a lot of times, at least I do, but I never really have to worry about that. So when I hit my retirement mark, I could actually just retire and just enjoy life. But some other people I know who have the same net worth as me, they did the same saving tactics. They didn't end up quitting their job because they need something called security because they're taking care of themselves and other people such as family members, whether it be kids or parents. So one thing I can do is pursue a risky career such as doing YouTube. And so far it's worked out and I'm doing a lot more than that. Another example is I am going to invest it might even be over like $100,000 into a random project that could just go to zero and I can make nothing from it. And I'm not talking about stocks or anything like that. I'm talking about growing my own company. But if it does work out, I am going to make a lot of money. I, I think I could turn this $100,000 into maybe even like $5 million or $10 million if it does work out. And I actually think there's like a 60 to 80% chance that that is going to happen. So would someone who relies on taking care of others take the risk that I'm taking? Or would they just keep their 100 to 200K job and just keep coasting along, living like an upper middle class life and just being like fine with that, you know? Uh, it's really different because I am blessed with the ability to take that risk and other people just are not. So again, because I was brought up in like a well-to-do family, I literally am benefiting from the rich getting richer because my family was already well off and hopefully I could take it to like another level because again, the rich get richer. And then other people whose family were not financially well off, uh, they might have to take those normal jobs. Maybe they have a good career, they get out of college, they get like an above average job, they're making like let's say 80K a year. They get slow, like maybe like five to 10% raises every single year, they climb up in the company and then they plateau at around like 200K a year. Let's just say that's a hypothetical example. And like, that's gonna be a very above average life. Like not a lot of people do that. However, would you call that rich or would you call that upper middle class? That's like a question that like is up for debate because what is the upper middle class? Everyone has kind of different measures for that. But pretty much just having the ability to take a risk means you can kind of like win the lottery, you know? Like the investment opportunity I was talking about, I could just become like an actual level of rich with like a pretty low investment relative to that amount. But like if you are working every day and you are trying to support a family, you're not gonna be able to just like risk 100K, right? I might even spend like over 200K on this project. I don't even know how much I'm actually gonna end up spending. So it's like a very variable amount. It's like very murky waters and there's no like clear cut path. But when you work at a company and just make a salary, you know exactly what's gonna happen for the next 10 to 20 years, assuming no like major financial crisis happens. I see this difference very starkly between me and my friend. Again, we had the same college degree, we had the same job, and we both saved up as much as we could. And I hit my retirement mark like a year before him. But when he hit his, I was like, hey, are you gonna actually quit your job? Or he's like, no dude, like I make the most money in my entire extended family, and one hour of his time is worth like four hours that someone else doesn't have to work. So it's like, why would he quit his job when he should just be making money to kind of help out his whole family as a whole? So that is one like major privilege that I have because of this. And next thing I wanna talk about is being able to enjoy life more as like a rich person because I realize as I am taking vacations, as I am like visiting other friends and family, I am able to get a better experience than other people. For example, I was skiing this weekend and skiing's like a rich person thing to do, right? It's so expensive. You have to buy skis or rent skis and then you have to buy a lift ticket. And some, even at like small mountains, lift tickets cost like $100 a day. So you have to like spend $100 a day. People sometimes make $100 a day, let alone spend that much, you know? And again, I need the skis, I need the Airbnb or hotel, I need to drive there, I need to fly there, I need to do all these other things, I need to get food there up on a mountain, which is really expensive. For example, like, 
<laughs> buying a drink on the mountain costs like 12 bucks for like a can of soda, which is absolutely ridiculous. But you know, it is what it is. You're up on a mountain getting food, getting like a slice of pizza, I think is like also like 15 bucks or something like that. Uh, hamburgers, maybe 20 bucks. And these are like cafeteria grade level food. They're not like nice levels of food. But essentially what I noticed when I was skiing on the weekdays, the mountain was empty and I could just go wherever I want. I don't have to worry about bumping into anyone else. There's no line on the chairlifts and it was very nice. I got to do a lot of runs, but as soon as the weekend hit, on Friday, I started noticing when I got to the ski resort, the lines at the base of the mountain were extremely long and it's just not as enjoyable. So my vacation time, even though I spend the same as other people to access the mountain, uh, my vacation time on the weekdays versus the weekends where people are off their jobs or their kids are out of school or whatever, the ones on the weekdays are worth a lot more. It's not worth the same hundred dollars as it is on the weekend. In fact, the tickets on the weekend should cost less because it's so crowded. Of course, they're never gonna do that, but because I don't have to rely on being somewhere for work on the weekdays, I can go take all my vacations on the weekdays and just rest up on the weekends instead. So while everyone's going out on the weekends, I can just stay home and avoid all the crowds and I pretty much get to enjoy life more than other people, which is, extremely nice and this extends to more than just ski trips for any vacation any recreational activity you do like you can go to a museum on the weekday there's going to be like no one there you go on the weekend it's going to be super packed you go take a plane ride to some random country if you do it on off peak seasons or times it's going to be like half the price or the quarter price compared to peak times so there are just like a lot of ways you can both save money and have a more enjoyable time. And that is worth something like having a more enjoyable time is kind of like priceless in a way, right? Because uh, you get to have more quality free time, which in turn makes you happier, which in turn makes you work better when you do actually go to work or do whatever you need to do. And that's just like such an intangible thing that people never really talk about. Uh, the last thing I want to talk about is having the ability to look better. So. I know, I know, I know, I'm not the most looker type of person, but uh, I've noticed a pattern where like rich people just look better than everyone else. And there are a lot of reasons for this. So people think it's like, oh, it's because you buy designer clothes or whatever. I personally don't, but like some people do, right? And I don't think designer clothes make people look better. I think designer clothes are actually like a flex for attractive people. And it's like, look at how stupid of a thing I can wear and still look good. It's kind of like a casual flex for attractive people. But like, yeah, I think designer clothing is an absolute scam and it's pretty much built for attractive people to look better and unattractive people to think they'll look better. But what I'm actually talking about when the rich get richer is being able to be more attractive in terms of having more time to exercise, having more time to watch their diet. For example, you could afford to not eat like fast food every day or something like that. You could hire like a dietitian and a personal chef to cook your meals for you and make sure you're eating like the best quality ingredients, which in turn should again, make you perform better in life in all aspects and pretty much just be a happier person. We also see examples of like Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk. These two people had like the most insane body transformations like I've ever seen. Like. Elon went from like this balding nerd into like Tony Stark, you know, it's like it, it, it's such a big difference that is just like unfathomable that that's actually possible. Like he just grows his hair back. And I, I get it. These surgeries are probably not that expensive. But if you do it like the right, right, right way, which I'm assuming he did, where he's like getting regular checkups on it. He has people like helping him style it in a certain way. Like it definitely like over time, incrementally, all these different things he's doing or is allowed to do makes him look a lot better than he normally would. And then you look at Jeff Bezos, like this dude looks like the kid that got bullied in school, right? He's like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm selling books on Amazon. But, the, but then you look at his new pictures and it's just like, he literally looks like Vin Diesel. Like what, what is up with that? It's just like such a drastic change in the way people look. And then the way that this benefits them obviously is that on average, I would assume people would want to look better. And why do people want to do that? Well, people treat attractive people better. You could look at all the studies on this. You could look at all the data on this. Like, you just get treated better if you look better. Of course, this is a little subjective, but there are like conventional standards of beauty or whatever that people like to look at. And if you are that, like, it's easier to get a sales job. It's easier to start a YouTube channel. It, anywhere your face is involved, or your body is involved, you're gonna have a leg up on other people and rich people get the benefit of that. And it doesn't end there because a lot of people, they 
want to be rich and people also value physical attraction. So what ends up happening is that all the rich people, regardless of what they looked like before, their spouse or partner who they have kids with are likely going to be more attractive than average. So then you get this period over time where it builds up over like hundreds or thousands of years where the rich people get slightly, slightly, slightly more attractive over time compared to the average person. And then that you get all the benefits that we talked about before where attractive people just are able to live better lives because everyone treats them better. Imagine waking up every day and everyone's smiling at you and then compare that to someone else where uh, you wake up every day and then you walk down the street and no one looks at you at all. I'm assuming those people lead very different lives and I don't need to spell this out for you guys, but like, yeah, attractive people just get treated better than unattractive people. But yeah, those are the main three ways that I think people often forget about when they talk about like the rich getting richer. Everyone talks about like, oh, like you would get to invest in this thing. And then over time, like you get to accumulate more and more wealth. Like it's not even that. It's like there's so many little things that just add up and it just snowballs into such a grand advantage. So again, it was the ability to take risk, uh, the ability to enjoy life more because of off peak times that you don't have to deal with. If you're not working typical hours, you can like do more fun stuff or like have a more enjoyable time and less crowds and stuff like that. And then lastly, it's just the ability to afford to take care of yourself and ideally become the best version of you, which would lead to just having people treat you better and living a better life after that. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much all there is to this video. I just thought it was like interesting to think about these things, but let me know your thoughts down in the comments below and I hope to see you all next time.